um, the guy who got me into caving said, look, you know, I'll take you underground, I'll, I'll teach you all sorts of cool stuff, but you have to promise me right now, this moment, that you will treat every other caver like family. Hmm. So, I mean it when I say, I'm your family now. You're welcome anytime to my, my place, right? I, I experienced a time of homelessness about four years ago. You know who came to my aid? Cavers. Not my family. <laughs> my real family, the cavers. Okay? Now, the reason why I bring this up is the guy who taught me that ethic, his life was saved because of these kits that we're going to make. He was stuck behind a, a sump. He was in Mammoth Cave. He's a lead cartographer for Mammoth. And uh, he had a, some uh, rainstorm that came in, freak rainstorm, and it, uh, it raised the sump about six feet. And so they were stuck for about two days, two and a half days, um, behind a sump. And they were just hanging out, chilling. Literally, getting cold. Literally. <laughs> okay. He was alive to get me into this crazy sport because of these things. So a quick primer on uh, hypothermia. There are basically five ways you can lose heat. They're right here on the board. Okay. So those five are conduction, convection, breathing, radiation. So your body heat is just radiating out from you. And then evaporation. Now... Can you do anything about this exhalation component? No. No, you can't do a thing about it. I'm not going to stop you from breathing. That's bad. I mean, I might if I get really angry, but no. <laughs> so exhalation is out. What we can do, though, on the other hand, is we can alter those other four things. Right? Radiation, what you want to do is reflect things back to your body. For evaporation, you put on new clothes. For convection, that's when air currents or water currents are pulling um, heat away from your body. What can you do to prevent that from occurring? Get rid of the currents. Yeah, get rid of the currents. So in this situation, shield yourself. Move. Go somewhere it's not it's not gonna cool you off. So if there's any sort of air currents, if there are any sort of water currents, get out of the water. Get out of the air current. Piece of cake. I mean, it's pretty obvious. And last one is conduction. That's like if, if one thing is touching another, the heat from that object will move into your body. Or it's actually a very oversimplified version of it. But how do you deal with convection? Or conduction, rather? Insulate. Yeah, sit on your pack or kneel on your knee pads. Yeah. Stand up. I want a physical barrier. Okay. So those are really the only things you can do. So here are the tips and tricks that I've got for you for handling these situations. So number one, if I'm going to go caving, there are a few things that I'm always going to bring with me. One of them is one of these things. This is a balaclava. You know how they say you lose a bunch of heat through your head? It's totally true. You also lose a bunch through your neck. So having a, a little teeny balaclava, even something that's as simple as like a silk balaclava, they take no space. This thing warms you up really well. And having another set of gloves. It doesn't have to be thick, thin is fine, right? Just something to cover your fingers. Because when you think about the, the things that are gonna get cold quickly, head and hands. Okay. The last thing that I bring as far as clothing is one of these. This is my favorite jacket, I've had it forever. But it's a it's a really lightweight jacket. I and mean, you can see it's really tiny. It crunches up into a little itty bitty ball. Right? It's got a couple properties. One of them is that it's got a hood. So if I'm wearing my cave suit, and I don't have anything over my neck, I can put the balaclava on, which covers my neck, and now I can also cover my neck a second time. I can zip it up. The other thing is, you notice it's extra long. It covers not just to my waist, but a little bit down below there. You'll see when I put on the, uh, when I make the hypothermia kit for you, you'll see that basically covers everything that the hypothermia kit's going to cover. Okay. So I definitely keep these things around. And I won't go underground without these. Okay. And for those of you who've been caving for a while, do you have something fairly similar to that? More or less? Yep. Yeah, lots of head shaking. Beautiful. Now, the other thing that you'll want to do is make something called a personal heat tent. And I'm trying to figure out the extra stuff that I have. Here. Personal heat tent, con uh, heat tent is comprised of just a couple of things. One a big trash bag. Now this is not like your standard garden variety trash bag that you get for your kitchen. You want a heavy duty trash bag. And it needs to be something that you can fit your entire body in. Now some of us, that's a pretty big body. Okay? <laughs> like I gotta have a contractor bag. 
And for most of you, it'll be a contractor bag. Now, for a little man over here, you can probably get away with a trash bag. <laughs> you fit just fine in a 33 gallon bag. For the rest of us, we're going to need contractor bags. And you can see that's what we purchased for you guys today. Right. You'll also want, and I'm, I'm taking apart my old kits because I've got to make a new one. You want a candle of some sort, right? Well loved candle. And you want a way to light it. Now, why don't I want to use matches? Get wet. Now, we can have all kinds of arguments about the best way to make a waterproof match, or we can use a lighter. <laughs> use a lighter. <laughs> I mean, this is backpacker. There are numbers of times where I've been out and I've tried to light a fire in the middle of a rainstorm in Alaska. You know what never fails? This thing. And it's like 50 cents to a buck. <laughs> the last thing you're going to want is a little bit of tinfoil. Now, there are a couple reasons for the tinfoil. You can see mine is bashed up. That's why I need to make a new kit. A couple things here is when you start putting that, that candle down on a rough surface, you're going to need to kind of build it a cradle so that it will sit flat and it won't tip over. The second thing is what um, Eric already pointed out, is when this thing starts to burn down, the, the wax will start you know, moving all over the place. And you want to catch that so it doesn't get all over the cave floor. So we want to be conservation minded even when we're saving our lives. Okay. Okay. So the way to kind of handle this is you take your lighter and your, um, your candle and just wrap them up in the tinfoil. And I'll, I'll do this again. And then you can take your trash bag, wrap it in the trash bag, and then stick it in a Ziploc bag. It's only about yay big. And just chuck that in the bottom of your pack. And you take it every single time you go outside. Outside, not just Kate. <laughs> For you guys who are in SAR, how many times have you had to respond to an individual who would have benefited from a personal heat tent even when you're just hiking? Too many. Dozens Way too many times. times a year. Yeah. Dozens and dozens. Many, many times. <laughs> so I put this in my backpack whenever I'm just hiking. And I also would encourage you to grab an extra one of these bags, pay for it please, um, and give it to friends. Teach them how to do this yourselves. That's okay. a trash bag compared to like a Mylar. It's so like good. It, yeah, you'll, well, so, yeah. I'll, so I'll make it, make one really quick and, and put it on and you'll see, like it, it keeps you very toasty. But it, that's better than Mylar. So well, like, so why do I have to worry about Mylar can tear pretty easily, like yeah. it's a little bit more fragile. This stuff, I mean, you put a hole in it, it's not going to keep tearing. So there's a benefit there. Yeah. This stuff is really hard to tear. I have spent a night under a space blanket before, the Mylar, and I hated it. Um, I have also been in heat tents, and I loved it. So I am, I will not, like, I've got a heat, I've got a, a Mylar blanket. I don't even bother bringing it anywhere. So, yeah. One of the things that I tend to do, I have a, I have a 44 gallon trash bag and all that, and I folded it up and put it inside the liner of my helmet. I mean, in a cold cave, it keeps my head, it helped keep my head warm and dry. Uh, in a hot cave, well, I kind of tend to ignore stuff like that. You know, it doesn't bother me, it's just go. But there, instead of having to dig around in your pack, because sometimes, you leave your pack behind, you go check out this small lead, something happens, you're not going to be able to come back out of that lead, but at least you got a bag to get into if you start getting cold. So that's why I keep it in there. The rest of the stuff is in, the, in my pack and easily accessible. So what I'd like to do really quickly for y'all is make one and show you how to put it together. And there are a couple kind of tips and tricks for how to do this, and I'm sorry there's already a hole in one end, but I'm going to try to kind of work around this. So the way to do this is you're going to put this thing on um, with one of the pointy bits right over the top of your head. Okay. And the reason why you do that is because it will create a little cradle of air over the top of your head. So to do this, what I'm going to do is kind of put it on, over the top of my head and see approximately where my face is. It's starting right about here. So it's somewhere right around here on my edge. And now all i got to do is just tear a hole in it. You want it just big enough to stick your face out. That's it. Go so somewhere around there. Okay. 
I got a trash bag so that I can breathe through, kind of without with this mask on. Now, can I get you to move just a smidge in that direction? I'm so sorry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rest of my hypothermia kit. I'm just going to sit down on the ground. I'm going to take that. This. Toss you and feel free to adjust where you're standing so that you can see what's going on. You see, this bag is a bit small for me. I needed a bigger bag. Now, I have a complete heat tank. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tin foil and I'm going to make a little teeny itty bitty cradle for it. Hard to do in a trash bag, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, the key thing here is I'm about to stick this candle between my legs. I do not want it to fall over. The tin foil is clutch. I'm, I'm sweating already in here, by the way. So all you got to do is light it with your lighter. This lighter, by the way, is like 10 years old. So don't get mad if it doesn't work. Oh, no, it works just fine. <laughs> you can see why I wanted to make a new kit. Mm -hmm. Would you ever get into the bag and wait to light the candle to see if you actually need it, depending absolutely. on the condition of the cave? Yes, absolutely. You'll find that just the trash bag alone works fantastic. Okay, I'm going to pour off a little bit of this. Sweet cable, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so not how much you love your candle. Yeah. Yeah. Other, other considerations on this, and... Rarely, I think, will you end up in this situation, but worthwhile to know. If you do end up in a cave that doesn't have good air, think twice about lighting a candle, right? So, like, you shouldn't be anywhere close to a cave that's, like, the gases are, like, close to the LEL or anything like that, but still, like, think about everything that you're doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it can be a bit difficult if you're really hypothermic or if you're yeah, in the sure. first stage because your body yeah, you is sweating. you got to make that decision. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I have a candle burning. <laughs> it's it's so it is so hot in here, you have no idea. <laughs> okay. I gotta, sorry, i got to put this candle on. I'm sweating so much. <laughs> okay. So th this is actually the way it works if you've ever, if you've ever experienced this for real. Um, you'll end up sitting in a, a location, you'll light the candle, and and the candle will burn for five, ten minutes, and all of a sudden you're like, holy cow, I'm burning up. Okay? Now, I am sweating so much already, i got to take this thing off. Okay, so that's your basic, that's your heat tent. That's hot. It's very hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm definitely listening. Like, I'm sweating a little. So, really, really useful. So rather than build one and use it today, we're just going to build one. And the grotto has purchased all of the, the materials at a cost of about two bucks per person. So if you want to take one home, please just give us a couple bucks to defray the cost of buying everything. Um, but what we're going to do... Can we Venmo the grotto, Venmo, or PayPal? Yeah. Yep. PayPal. Yeah, but Venmo. We should write the... I post it like 12 times on the group page, yeah. so... <laughs> so what you should do is you should grab a candle, a lighter, a trash bag, and it seems like... Where the foil? Here it is. And about one foot square of tin foil. 
Notice all of that is written on the board and a zip lock. To build it, because you're about a foot square ish, right? No big deal. Not. I find that it works pretty good to kind of almost thirds. Take your candle and your lighter, roll that bad boy up. Now this is almost waterproof, almost. But you know what else you can do to make it even more waterproof? Vacuum seal it. You could vacuum <laughs> seal it, yes, <laughs> if you really wanted to. Right. You can also roll it in the actual trash bag itself, or you cannot, depends on, on how you want to play the game. Right? And then just stick it in the zip up bag. I also like to put silica gel, like a silica gel packet in mine to, because your your lighter, if it comes out a little moist, that sucks. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And that right there <laughs> is a complete half turn. And if you can't fit that in your pack, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Yes, sir. How cold does a cave have to be for me to worry about hypothermia being an issue? If, if, if you're in a cave. Yeah. I was. I did a training in Puerto Rico where I don't even know what the cave temperatures were, like 88 degrees. And we had a guy that we strapped into a litter, and in an hour and a half, he was shivering. So even out like out east in Tad and stuff, the caves are yes. not cold like they are here. Hypothermia is like is the thing that kills people. Sometimes, not very Your injuries are rarely going to kill you in a cave. It's going to be the, the environment that's yeah. cooling off. The cave is safer than the trip to the cave, by the way. <laughs> so, probably. here's what I'd like for us to do, is make as many of these as we can tonight. I think we have, what, enough to make 100 and... We only have to make 100. 100 of them? Mm -hmm. So, I'd just like to hang out here making hypothermia kits. If you want to take one home, what you got to do is just give uh, the grotto a couple bucks, and then you need to walk up the door with one of these. Reassembly line. Okay? Yes, free assembly line. That's exactly what we're going to do. Are there any questions before I set you free to frolic making hypothermia kits? Can I hold the tinfoil and just cut one foot squares for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Awesome. I'll, I'll end this by saying this. Um, I'm serious about uh, the, the family nature of caving. Like, it is typical for cavers um, to just call each other when you just go into town and you just say, hey, can you take me caving? And you've never met them ever before in your life and you'll do something incredibly dangerous together. <laughs> so <laughs> so we are, I am 100% serious. Treat everyone here like family because we will, we will have your back. You know, Even if I've never met you before, I will crawl underground through horrible, horrible conditions just to get you out. You crawl into a little trash for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're making it sound bad. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about this. I love trash. Have you ever had a chance to get on a rope and you want to train or you haven't been able to get through a cave or anything? Like, just talk to somebody here and they'll make it happen. Yeah, I have to expand upon that family thing. I, I caved here in Utah for well over 12, 15 years, and then I moved to Tennessee, tag. Uh, and people out there, um, you know, found out that I, that I came out there, and they, they all went out of their way to try to take me out caving, show me all the tag classics and everything. It is, it is a family thing, I mean, because we all do something that not a lot of people do. You know, caving is not for everybody. I've taken a lot of people caving, and... I've never seen him again. <laughs> they got out of the cave. <laughs> afterwards, afterwards, I never saw him. <laughs> I don't know how much I believe that. <laughs> okay, guys. Go ahead. Start putting things together.